Hello everybody and welcome back to Synapse. This is Ritika. Today we'll talk about the brachial artery. Brachial artery is a continuation of axillary artery below the lower border of teres major muscle. Below the lower border of teres major muscle, axillary artery continues as the brachial artery. It terminates at the level of neck of radius where it divides into two terminal branches that is ulnar artery and the radial artery. The course of brachial artery, it runs downwards and laterally in the arm. Right, it runs downwards and laterally and it reaches the cubital fossa medial to the tendon of the biceps brachii muscle. This is the tendon of biceps brachii muscle. It will lie medial to that tendon. Further, it continues till the neck or uh, till the level of neck of radius where it divides into the two terminal branches okay now let's look at a few relations of the brachial artery it is um, it lies majorly superficial throughout see this superficial this is the brachial artery it is superficial it is not covered by a muscle medially it is not covered by any muscle medially thus it is superficial throughout it is accompanied by two vena comitants throughout its course. Okay, this is vena comitants. There are two vena comitants which accompany the brachial artery. And the anterior relation in the cubital fossa that is superficial to the brachial artery lies the bicipital aponeurosis like this. Okay, okay. bicipital aponeurosis. And superficial to that lies the median cubital vein. The median cubital vein connects the cephalic vein and the basilic vein. The posterior relations of brachial artery, we can see here, this is the brachial artery. Right beside it, that is behind it, you have this artery which is profunda brachii artery, which is a branch of brachial artery. And another structure you see posterior is this nerve here, right, which is the radial nerve so posterior relations profunda brachii artery and the radial nerve and also you see here this is the triceps brachii muscle this is the triceps brachii muscle thus the posterior relations of the brachial artery is profunda brachii artery radial nerve and the triceps muscle let's look at the medial relations we have the basilic vein which is here, here and in this cross section we see basilic vein here. So basilic vein lies medial to the brachial artery throughout and the next structure is the ulnar nerve. This is the ulnar nerve and in this cross section we can see ulnar nerve here and in this cross section we can see the ulnar nerve here. Thus, even ulnar nerve lies medial to the brachial artery throughout. So what are the medial relations? basilic vein and the ulnar nerve let's look at the lateral relation to the brachial artery this is the coracobrachialis muscle right coracobrachialis muscle is lateral to the brachial artery and then is the median nerve median nerve it lies lateral only in the upper part see this is the median nerve and here is the median nerve so in the upper part of the arm we see that it is slightly lateral to the brachial artery but if you look at it if you trace it further down we see that median nerve is, is it is medial to the brachial artery why is that so now if this is a brachial artery if this is the median nerve median nerve will cross it from lateral to the medial side in front of the brachial artery right this is brachial artery, this is median nerve, median nerve crosses the brachial artery from lateral to medial aspect in front of the brachial artery and thus in the upper part median nerve is lateral to brachial artery, in the lower part the median nerve is medial to the brachial artery, right? And another lateral relation of brachial artery is the biceps muscle. This is the short head of biceps and this is the long head of biceps. So this together is bicep brachii. So coracobrachialis and biceps brachii are lateral relations for the brachial artery. And in the upper part, another lateral relation is the median nerve. But median nerve lies medial to the brachial artery in the lower part of the arm. 
branches of a brachial artery. The first and the most important and the largest branch of the brachial artery is the profunda brachii artery, right? which is given off just a little below the teres major muscle and it accompanies the radial nerve in the radial groove. right? It goes behind the humerus and lies in the radial groove along with the radial nerve. I'll talk about profunda brachii in detail in a few minutes. Let's look at the other branches of brachial artery. Second, we have the muscular branches, unnamed muscular branches, which supplies the muscles in this region. And then we have the nutrient artery, the nutrient artery to the humerus, right? which is not shown in this diagram. It supplies the humerus, this nutrient artery to the humerus. And then we have the superior ulnar collateral. Superior ulnar collateral runs down. It accompanies the ulnar nerve. And it takes part in the anastomosis at the elbow behind the medial condyle of the humerus. Then is the inferior ulnar collateral, which is also like a branch of brachial artery runs downwards, takes part in the anastomosis around the elbow in front of the medial condyle of the humerus. And then we have the two terminal branches, ulnar artery and the radial artery. These are the branches of the brachial artery. As I already told you, profunda brachii is the main and is the largest branch of the brachial artery which is given off a little below the teres major muscle. It accompanies the radial nerve and enters the radial groove about which there is a separate uh, video. Please do check it out. It runs in the radial groove along with the radial nerve and when it reaches the lateral aspect it has to pierce the lateral intermuscular septum. But before piercing the lateral intramuscular septum, it divides into two branches, right? That is anterior descending branch, also called radial collateral branch, which pierces the lateral intramuscular septum and runs down along with the radial nerve and takes part uh, in the anastomosis at the elbow in front of the lateral condyle of the humerus. The other branch, other terminal branch of the profunda brachii artery is the posterior descending branch which is represented in dotted lines because it is posterior to the humerus. This is also called the medial collateral branch. Even that like runs down and takes part in the anastomosis at the elbow behind the lateral condyle of the humerus. And another branch coming from profunda brachii is called the deltoid branch right this is the deltoid branch which runs upwards and this anastomosis with the descending branch of the posterior circumflex humeral artery which is a branch of axillary artery right deltoid branch of profunda brachii anastomosis with the descending branch of the posterior circumflex humeral artery which is further a branch of axillary artery and another branch coming from profunda brachii artery is the nutrient artery. Nutrient artery to the humerus, but this is not the main artery to the humerus. Well, the main artery to the humerus is the one coming directly from the brachial artery, right? One of the very common applications or significance of brachial artery is in the measurement of blood pressure. Brachial artery is preferred for the measurement of blood pressure. It's because it is very e it can be very easily auscultated in the cubital region. And if there is any kind of bleeding in the distal part of the arm, as in here, to arrest the bleeding or to decrease the bleeding, compressing brachial artery will become very important. So in the middle of the arm is the best place to compress the brachial artery where it can be pressed against the tendon of coracobrachialis muscle.